then a few years later, I feel it is percolated up where I find that there are holding places, maybe in telling my story around that situation or something. So, you know, having feelings like, oh, I wasn't even there at all, or anyway, around that process. Do this. It seems, releasing what seems to be the layers. Yeah, um, when Helen Shuckman was scribing A Course in Miracles, uh, Jesus was also giving her a lot of, of advice in terms of um, her profession and her daily life. It was very practical advice. And one of the things that Jesus told Helen was that um, you never go after the major defense mechanisms first. Uh, don't, don't go for the jugular right away. You have to work on what seems to be lesser defenses, where there's not so much resistance and there's not so much attachment first to, to build successes. And we know that from even working with children, you know, you, you have, they have to have a sense of success they have to have a sense of confidence to, to be inspired to move on to a more detailed or more advanced uh, aspects of the curriculum they're learning. So it's the same with spiritual awakening, that you, you don't go for the jugular. So that's where this is feeling, almost an like experiential feeling of layers comes in, where you feel like you're, you're working with something that's touching on the surface of consciousness that you can actually deal with in a practical way that seems relevant to the mind and then it, a period of time can pass, even if you do have a sense of release and relief um, with it, which it can feel like a completion, some kind of a completion or some kind of a closure with a certain issue or event and then it can seem to circle back and almost just like it, it's an inroads to a deeper, deeper aspect of the same root, like it's it's going inward. And in Lessons 79 and 80, Jesus talks about in his workbook, you know, let me recognize the problem so it can be solved. And then Lesson 80 is let me recognize my problems have been solved. But he basically lays out in those lessons that until you can accurately define the problem, exactly what it is and where it is, then you can't fully help uh, really accept the correction or the full completion and there's quite a lot of ego resistance to to actually defining the problem where it is and exactly as it is, just as a belief in the mind. And a lot of times people will work through a lot of issues that seem very, very specific and that's very practical. It's almost like if we used the metaphor of a tree you're not going to go with a chainsaw right at the trunk. You usually, according to the way that this, this spirituality works, is you start off with the, the leaves uh, way out there, then you kind of work with the leaves quite a bit, and then you follow some of the little twigs in, and then you follow it into bigger branches and bigger branches, and eventually you would make it down to the trunk. And that's the way that it went in my life. I mean, I, I had to really be practical and work with specific uh, issues and lessons that were coming up because that's what I believed in. I believed that they were very specific. And it wouldn't do me any good just to say a cliché or, uh, oh, it's only an illusion or something like this because in one sense it was just glossing over doing the work and really facing all those emotions that were tied into that specific issue. Uh, one time there was a there was a man who was working with, with in his mind with Jesus and um, I don't know if you some of you might have heard of Paul Tuttle and uh, Susan and the Raj material but that's over based over in uh, Washington uh, and there was an early experience that Paul had where he was working with Raj or Jesus and um, he experienced this. Uh, I believe he was here in Hawaii and, and he experienced this sharp back pain and it was very, very sharp. He came inside the house, he had just been uh, carrying heavy groceries in, heavy bags of groceries into the house and 
he experienced this very sharp back pain and he kind of went into prayer and meditation to really tune in and talk to Jesus about this and and he said, yeah, I think I really overdid it this time. You know, Jesus, I should have asked somebody for help in carrying all these groceries in and everything. And, um, and Jesus worked with him and said, no, no, it, the back pain that you're experiencing really doesn't have anything to do with the groceries. That was just the presenting problem. Uh, he, he was associating the heavy, heavy bags and carrying them in with the stab of back pain. And Jesus says, no, no, it's... He started right in with him and he says, uh, uh, it goes back to your birth uh, in this lifetime that he said uh, it was actually a, what, what the world would call a breech birth and it was, to, it was not in a hospital, it was in a, a, a Christian science uh, facility and um, Jesus said, you haven't forgiven your mother, you haven't forgiven the attendants and the people that were there, you've got this this major grievance going on around your birth in this into this lifetime. And that's it has nothing to do with the groceries. It has to do with this grievance that you're carrying. So it, that's just a good example about how on the surface the mind will try to to make an attachment to some kind of cause effect event that seems rational and reasonable and then the pain goes way, way deeper. And so at one point, uh, after Jesus got it into that point, uh, he, he then he goes, he's, he tells him, uh, I will tell you something, the, the birth never happened. <laughs> 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 and that's, now Jesus is really getting into the essence of forgiveness, which was that, that the whole birth was made up as a story to project the pain in the mind of believing in separation and projecting it off into, onto this breech birth. So you see it's almost like a double, a double projection. One into an unconscious event that's underneath this conscious event of carrying these heavy groceries. And then underneath it is this very non-specific belief in separation from God. And it's kind of like we talked a little bit about the dark night of the soul. When, when mystics and saints start to go deep into their mind, the deeper they go, they start to pass through this ring of fear, and it's a very non-specific fear. It's almost like when you're going through it, it's like you can sometimes look around at the world and go, I have no cause to be this fearful. There's nothing going on in my life or the world that would be relevant to this amount of fear. And it's because you're starting to get down to the core, to the root, of the fear, which is the belief in separation from God, and it's very, very non-specific. I remember working with the Course for years and years, and then starting to get in touch with this deep-seated fear, this panic, this very sharp anxiety, all these kind of intense feelings, and kind of just looking around, like going, okay, I can't, now I can't even pawn it off on anything. You know, I can't say, some traumatic event that's happening in my life. And then I would try to go in and, is it a memory? Is this like a past life memory? Something that I'm facing? You know, no, can't, no. It just, when you get through the layers of specificity, then you just need to be prepared for it to get very generalized, and very non-specific. The trials and the opportunities seem to come up over and over. And it's, it's good to know these things, so that when, it, when you're doing this inner work and it starts to happen, you know, you don't kind of think you're doing something wrong, or think you've, you've messed up or anything. It's not anything of that nature at all. It's just like moving down into that. Getting down to the core, the root cause.